hey, if you're watching the video, you probably already know this, but we're $30 trillion in the hole. We keep borrowing more money uh, to pay for things uh, that we don't have the money to pay for. And at some point, that's going to have an impact on our economy uh, and on retirees and their portfolios. And that's obviously what the channel is all about. So I wanted to bring to light some of the research I've been doing lately, as well as give you some ideas of what you can do to prepare yourself for whatever might come. So I'm going to pop up a chart here and you'll see what I'm talking about. So top line here is what's the government bringing in? This goes all the way back almost 40 years. Uh, the second line, the little orange line you're going to see there is our deficit annually. How much of a deficit are we running? And that nasty red line at the bottom is total debt, total government debt. So you can see back in the 80s and 90s, we had debt, but it wasn't nearly as substantial as it became once we got to 2008. So you see right there, 2008, it's expanding substantially. Uh, and then it leveled off a little bit. We continued to run deficits and add more debt. There's COVID. You can see what happened with COVID. Substantial spending, government stimulus, bailouts, all of these things that have happened in the last 15 or so years have really exploded the amount of debt that we have. And you can see we're now sitting north of $30 trillion in federal debt. Now that's all money that we've got to pay back at some point in the future. And here's the kicker. A lot of that money printing spurred the inflation that we've had over the last couple of years. Uh, you can't add more money into the system without prices going up. And so that's really what happened. Well, part of the way that they've tamped that down is by raising interest rates. But here's the, the kicker. When the federal government raises interest rates, that also means, that doesn't just mean it's more expensive to borrow to buy a house or to get a car. That means that it's more expensive to service our own debt. So every week we issue new debt to pay off the old stuff that's maturing because we don't have the money to pay it off. So we borrow to be able to pay off previous investors and we have to borrow at new higher interest rates. Additionally, we've got to backfill that deficit, the money that we don't have by issuing new debt. That's why the debt keeps growing. And we're doing that now at higher interest rates than what's running off the books because what's running off the books was issued at times when interest rates were lower. So when you see treasury rates, that's how much money we collectively, our government has to pay when they borrow money. That can only come from one place. That can only come from tax revenue. That's the income for the government is what are they taxing? What's coming in? And so we've got this substantial debt that's out there and the cost for it is going up as interest rates have risen. The longer interest rates stay higher, the more and more important that's going to be. And I think that at some point in the future here, you're gonna to start to see people talking about how much it costs to service our own debt. What's the interest that we're paying and how much of that revenue that we're bringing in is being eaten up just paying for the previous spending. The issue is what's it do to the growth of our economy and as a result, the growth of the stock market and portfolio values when we have this albatross hanging around our neck of massive debt and needing to service that debt, needing to pay for it as that money is borrowed, let alone actually paying the thing down or running a, a surplus, which we're, we're not near that point of the discussion. I hope that at some point that becomes a thing. So then the question becomes, well, how do I exist in that environment? And what's likely to potentially happen to markets, to asset prices, et cetera, uh, and how does that affect me? If you're watching the video and you enjoy it, I hope that you'll subscribe to the channel and come on back and see some of our other stuff. Uh, in the meantime, meander on down below. Check out the links in the description. I've got a few links to some of our resources out there, as well as the ability to book a call with me if you like. Sometimes people who are planning for this sort of stuff are watching YouTube and they're not real sure where to turn. Uh, if you're looking for a little help with that, you can click the button. It'll take you out to the website, tell you how that works, and you can book a little bit of time. I'd be happy to go over your own situation with you and see what we can do to help. I'm going to take you back to a time that I'm sure you remember in history, the late 70s and early 80s. Stagflation, uh, high interest rates, low growth, uh, and just a really difficult time financially. And it lasted for a while, but it did not last forever. Uh, if we go into another scenario like that, how can you protect yourself so that you can still meet the retirement goals that you have and feel good about your own retirement, even in a place where we don't have the same growth levels that we've had? One, I mentioned it before, start shifting money over onto the Roth side of things. Get the tax man out of your retirement plan if you can help it. Get a plan there, don't do it all at once, don't crush yourself with taxes, but figure out a conversion plan so that you can start to shift away from that. Because if we can see that that's a likely scenario, can't guarantee that it'll happen, but if you can see that higher taxes are a likely scenario, don't stick around and wait to pay those taxes. Pay those taxes now and get it over onto the Roth side. So first things first, Roth conversions, say it all the time, say it again, get yourself a plan if you're 
to be taxed heavy and start shifting money over. Second thing, assess the risk that you have in your portfolio. It's okay to take risk. You should take risk. That's what allows for potential growth, but you have to be aware of how much risk you're taking, what kind of downside you might be looking at, go back through times in history, and given your own asset allocation, what would you be looking at? And is that something that you can withstand? You need to do that before you need to do that. And what I mean when I say that is you need to do that now because you're trying to protect from the thing that could potentially happen. Assess the risk now, make sure you're comfortable with it. If you're not, turn the volume down a little bit on the level of risk that you have in your portfolio uh, so that you can withstand any potential downturn that would come. Because if you wait, it's too late. If you wait until the downturns happen, I've seen this happen before, and then clients are like, well, I already lost the money, now I just gotta grit it out and wait. Or worse, they sell and go to cash, and then they lose all of the recovery that happens after that. Uh, the time to assess the risk, the time to buy insurance for your house is before it's on fire. I say it all the time, I just said it again, but that's true. Get the insurance now, figure out where you're at and if it's a good place for you. Number three, segment your money. Do this as part of your financial plan, but segment your money out. Separate your growth money, the money that's allowed to fluctuate, that has the ups and downs, but gives you the most growth potential from your income money and from your cash reserves. Keep those three things separate and know what's in each of them and know what you would do in the event of a downturn uh, so that you're not stuck with this big pot of money that has fluctuation that you're trying to rely on for income and a major downturn happens and now you either don't have the ability to retire or you're making day-to-day -day life decisions based on the market. Ah, we can't go out to eat because the market's down and uh, seeing the pot of money shrinking. Separate that out, keep it over there. You need it, keep it over there so that you're not drawing from it at an inopportune time. I've got some videos about that. I just recorded another one. I don't know if it'll go up before this or after this but about a three bucket plan. Uh, look for it, or if it's already up, I'll put a link up there. Hopefully this wasn't too doomy and gloomy, if those are even words. Hopefully this wasn't too much doom and gloom for you. Uh, I thank you for being here. I hope that you enjoyed the video today. I hope it brought some thought to you uh, and something to think about for your own retirement, uh, and I'll see you again.